All right, all right. We are in the grand, the grand spa October finale for 2021. So welcome everyone and congratulations to everyone for like making it this far and qualifying. So that's pretty good. Um, okay, so let's just uh, introduce everyone. So starting from like OG, OO, CG, and CO. Um, Hi, OG, PM, Zion. No preferred pronouns. Um, my name's Leona. Um, I'm BPM. Preferred pronouns to she and her, POS, and voice. Hi, I'm Pushpa. Oh. I'll be the DLO, no preferred pronouns, and Saloni will be the LO, no pronouns are she, her. All right, nice. And CG. Hi, I'm Lemba Ogav, preferred pronoun she, her. I am the second speaker. Uh, my preferred pronoun is he am, or they. And finally, CEO. Hi, I'm Pranav. I'm MO, he did pronouns. Um, Hi, I'm Therese, all position whip, uh, gender pronouns, she, her. All right, thank you everyone for the introductions. So I am the Grand Spa and I will be chairing this round and paneling with me is Ravan TJ, he, they, host. All right, um, so just before we get started, just a reminder to everyone about what's at stake here. If you are the people's champion and you're voted in by reactions on Facebook, you shall receive a free food delivery from Grab Food so you can have a nice lunch or dinner. Sounds pretty nice, but you can also win the judges champion prize where you can attend a free tournament from Wolves for you and your partner. So that also sounds quite nice in my opinion. All right. Uh, so with that being said, I think if there's no concerns, we can get started. So on the motion, this house will arrest the jigsaw killer instead of letting them go. Uh, yes, I invite the PM. Here, here. Hi, just turning on. Um, I prefer verbal POI, so if you have any questions, just say I. Okay. Starting in three, two, one. I'm going to do three things in my speech. Firstly, set up the gulf beards of this and some clarifications for this debate to happen. The secondly is discussing what are the standards of arresting people and why vigilante justice in the form of jigsaw is never good. And thirdly, talking about the outcomes of what happens on the converse if you do let this person go and why that's really, really bad for everyone. So just clearing that up. Moving on first to the Gulfiat, I think we must assume some level of rehabilitation in status quo. So for example, paroles, we need to assume that a lot of people, even in status quo, can be successfully rehabilitated. The second thing is that I, I want to suggest that there's some level in status quo of tracking these bad people down through alternative measures, either having enforcement. So the point of it is that some people are willing, I think we need to assume in good faith that these things can happen. The question, and I'll prove to you why it will happen later on. The second thing I want to clarify real quick is what who the jigsaw killer is in terms of their identity as someone who is dying is not as relevant because firstly, in the standard of law, um, you as a non-corrupt police uh, police officer are acting as an agent of the law and there are many people who are bad and could potentially cure cancer but we still lock them up and arrest them because the justice that the police serve right now as an agent of the state is retributive in nature aka you're doing it for crimes that already have been committed and you try not to um, make your own moral judgment about whether this person is good or bad you just follow mostly the law so you don't really care that he's dying um Secondly, even if the standard was what he does later on, if that's the standard, you should also arrest this person 
you should arrest Jigsaw because you know for sure that this person is going to harm other people, resulting most likely in their death or at least some sort of major trauma and damages otherwise. So you have an obligation as a person who is a police officer to still arrest this person. The last thing I want to do in the clarifications is that the, prom the problems with the benefits that you accrue by these people is that they are there is unlikely to get any large-scale benefits at all, even if there's a delta of change. So even if they have successfully rehabilitated some people, where well, we don't think this is a fair trade-off. The first thing is that this person might have been able to change to alternative measures, like them reporting it off to the police, giving the evidence, etc. So this person might have been scared off to doing so if he is reported. The second thing is that this person might have a crime of passion. It's very hard for this one person to decide what's good or bad. The third thing is that this person's failings or that the, the victim's failings will never translate to the wider community because people would not know about their white collar crime or don't see it as a change because it is vigilante justice. So these benefits are not unique to Jigsaw. So the first thing I want to talk about is the standard of arresting people. So I think in terms of just arresting someone, as long as this person has violated someone else's right, in this specific case, you know, killing them, I think that you should be arrested. So um, the specific thing, the specific nuance that we are bringing in here is that why this re rehabilitation that we have in status quo is a lot better, because we think everyone deserves a choice and a chance to rehabilitate. And the outcome of failing rehabilitation, at least in status quo in a system, is that you go back and go serve like another three months before we let you out in parole. So you have positive incentives for you to go and be a better person. The problem that when you only have death as the other option is that some people who fail the first time were only given the opportunity to confront their moral failings at the first time, but not the chance to later on reflect upon those moral failings and try again. So I think the system allows for more chances for this person, especially if you believe that in some sense, crime was a form of, you know, uh, nature versus nurture and all these other things. So they might not have all the choices in this world. I think some level of moral luck should be given to that. Should, they should be cared for a bit more, given a little more, made more chances. So in our world, we are more able to rehabilitate more people because less people are, you know, dead. The second thing is that I think we need to point out that these systems that if we do arrest this person, there is a possibility for us to benefit of this because the systems that he is currently using to find his victims, either we can absorb him into the system, offer him, for example, plea bargains better, um, a chance to enact his form of justice in terms of him finding out how he's getting these people and his victims. That means more people can report can be popular, can be caught, we can get better overall policies that translate to the wider community. If Jigsaw is truly trying to catch people out of altruism, they would agree to help and collaborate for finding these people at the very least. The thing that we don't agree with as a police officer is his means um, to his end. The second thing is there is no proof and the bad people will get away anyway. I think that's a trade-off we are willing to take because of the specific the, because the methods of punishing people shouldn't be vigilante justice, but because there is an unequal standard that not everyone will be aware of because it's all in his own mind, and that a lot of people will fall short of his idea of justice, just as if you were, you know, slippery slow, if you're able to, like, everybody choose their own, that's not very good. Any POIs? Pretty much. Oh. Um, you say that, uh, that the likelihood of these individuals realizing that they deserve a second cho choice, how is that higher in your paradigm when they are just given some sort of parole? Um, so I think being being locked up in a prison, not having agency to like go everywhere, not being able to see your family, being forced to like uh, let go of a lot of forms of control that you otherwise have is a system that works for a lot of people. Um, I think there is still an incentive. I just don't think the, the converse to that is to kill them or threaten them if, if you don't do this, you're going to die. Because that's just not what, I think everyone deserves a right to live. I don't think that should be that. Yeah. So uh, the second, so yeah. So I think this is far worse because you are likely to have a cult of personality of killing that people want to copycat. At the point at which we say that one person can decide the moral failings of everyone else based on his own ideas, I think that means there's no more check and balances for everyone else because they're like, oh, but based on my idea of morality, this person doesn't live up to it. I can also do these things. So I think that's really bad for safety as a whole because when people feel inspired, um, a lot of people are going to do their own thing and a lot of people are going to kill based on their own morality and that makes a lot of people a lot more unsafe. And that specifically points out the proportionality that the system is able to have compared to the individual because it's based on the idea of what the majority wants. It, can comes, it comes with courts, it comes with laws, it comes with people 
not just knowing their rights and having a choice and an ability to speak out, but also just people being able to like decide as a community what you think is your idea of justice. So that's inherently good. And I think this also is really, really important because the safety of people is not just, is based off what they think is the morality. So even if someone did a white collar crime, a lot of people in society, they think that that's not a real big deal. Um, you would feel really, really scared because you think that this person is coming after you. Um, I also think just like people have a right to not die and um, you as a police officer deserve to be a good cop and be blind. To, like him, like, yeah, you should just catch him up. Thanks. All right, thank you very much to the Prime Minister and I invite the leader of the opposition to him. Am I fairly audible? Yep, you're good. All right, I'll just set up my time. Starting in three, two, one. Panel, understand that the government over here is very conveniently today skewed what these particular criminals look like to us, right? We come and tell you, obviously, there's something known as an evilness scale where we are able to understand whether the crime committed is grave or whether it's not. We understand it's grave or heinous when we see it's affecting many more people than just a few. And at this point of time, the people in question over here that were actually victims of the jigsaw killer were in fact seen to be people with loose moral characters who actually did affect people, were white collar criminals and, and did get away from evade, evade justice by suppressing evidence and or witnesses, among other things that they could have possibly done, right? At their very disposal because they have their very advantage as white collar criminals. For the coming and telling you that now that you've established what these victims look like and the crime is actually heinous in nature, we're able to tell you that white collar crimes also include things like public corruption, healthcare fraud, mortgage fraud, security fraud, and money laundering, to name a few, right? At this point of time, we agree, we understand that se several experts agree that the economic impact of this particular white collar crime is far more as well as the other impacts it may have, right? And further elucidating on the same, we come and tell you that it endangers employees to unsafe working conditions, it injures consumers because of dangerous products, and it causes pollution problems for a community. So the, the detriment that these particular victims are causing is not just to people around them, but also on a very wide scale level on various other spheres of life, right? To various other people who had nothing to do with this. At that point, we come and tell you, that is why we understand that the particular crim uh, criminal over here that is a jigsaw killer is not somebody who's a pedophile, who is not somebody who's killing innocent people or women, and is not particularly killing somebody for his own gain at this point of time, right? But these people, in fact, who is who he is victimizing these particular white collar criminals did have an incentive a personal selfish motive or gain that they, that they actually went ahead and carried on the uh, crimes further perpetuating them while knowingly causing harm to other people in question right through these very crimes in nature for the coming and telling that since so many lives have been affected it's not just the particular people who are affected but also the all the victims who did come forward and came towards the justice system but the justice system failed them which is when we come and tell you a first claim that is that the current criminal justice system has failed or is incompetent to deal with these particular people we come and tell you that number one the prisons are overburdened and it's very easy to bail out of them for these particular criminals understand that they are rich people who do have the kind of power to come out of it at least the networking in nature Further, we come and tell you because of this very advantage, we come, uh, we understand that these white collar criminals uh, are able to uh, suppress uh, evidence, witnesses, etc. through money. And at that point of time, when the government uh, speaker comes and talks about how they're going to put this person through positive incentives, give them some sort of parole and further retribute them into society, rehabilitate them into society, we come and tell you that's only going to happen if they actually get arrested in the first place, right? Or even if they're actually sentenced properly at that very point. We see that that is not happening. Secondly, even if it is happening, it is sure that these particular people are given light sentencing when, when compared to other criminals in, 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 in the court, right? This is a fact that has been proven again and again. For the coming and telling you, they're in the jail again, even if they're sentenced. At that point of time, many, several other things can happen, right? If they come and say that the, that is very inhuman to put them through torture, understand that that torture is a harm that is also incentric on your side of the house. Like that is symmetrical there as well, right? That, that exists on your paradigm as well. And that is something we cannot do away with because at that point of time, they're in jail in the hands of the state. And at that point, the state has also failed those people and giving them a proper method of rehabilitation. For the coming and telling you, even if they're not put through those particular harms, they're going to come out as hardened criminals and there's no guarantee that they're going to come out 100% rehabilitated properly and successfully, right? But at least in our side of the house on a comparative, we are ensured 100% rehabilitation of the tests actually works and that they actually come out alive out of it. Further, we come and tell you, since rehabilitation is uncertain, those criminals are able to find loopholes and get away with whatever they want to, as already reiterated again and again. Thus, there's no retribution, there's no proper rehabilitation on a comparative. And on a comparative, they will still continue being criminals on the government side today. 
Now, someone else might also become a scapegoat, scapegoat for the crimes, right? And that again is detrimental to those very people. Further, the victims of the particular crimes that these people perpetrate crimes against, those people are not going to get any sort of catharsis on that in the house. And even if they do, even if they come back into society after going to jail for say 18 months, the victim will have to be re-victimized, realizing that the, probably the person has not changed at all, and they're probably going to per continue perpetuating the same crimes after coming out of jail, right? And besides that, it's also a possibility of them being able to perpetuate the crimes from within the jail, considering these are white collar crimes. Understanding all these very scenarios, we move on to a second claim. That is the need for our side of the house, our stance, right? We come and tell you why is it so important and why at least on a comparative, it is better off over here. We come and tell you that criminals, uh, as we've already proven to you, criminals can also be victims of the state and the victims are definitely going to be victims of the state anyway on that side. There's going to be no sort of catharsis for anybody over there. We can Come and tell you the criminals will get re-victimized again and again. And for this purpose of debate, as you've already told you, there's going to be 100% a permanent rehabilitation for the particular people in question. This is why we come and reiterate that these people with loose moral fabric who got away with these very crimes were aware, were not scared of the justice system, who continued perpetuating them, and the system was not able to uh, change them, but wherein our system on a comparative will force them to change. At this point of time, we understand there is a price that has been paid to society at large that you have harmed. And at the point of time, we see the price being paid by them on a comparative and gov side today is not enough. Further coming and telling you that putting them in a position, uh, we have to put them in a position of the people whom they perpetuate those crimes against. At that point of time, they will they will be able to um, get on with em empathy and other sort of emotions to be able to change them into the people that they need to become. POIs before I move on, CG. Why do you think it is justified for prior to short term benefit like creating short term deterrence when we could create create a much more better deterrence on the part, on the side of government side? Please explain. Right, so we haven't gotten any material as to why that deterrence on your side is long term, because we do see that number one, they get away easy, but at that point of time, they might not even get, uh, they might not even be subjected to jail or other side of harms, right? On our side of the house, at least there's a long term change, because at this point of time, when they put, they put in the shoes of the victims themselves, when they put through life altering events, where they're, where they're forced to morally question themselves and understand and have flashbacks of their life as to what they have done and why they ended up in this position, probably is when they'll be able to question themselves and change themselves truly at that point of time, right? They come and tell you that putting them in this very position, they're able to actually give truly an eye to an eye, which is what the justice system stands for, right? It's not unfair. And if we, even if we understand that, even if they fail this test, it's going to be one less evil person in the society. Uh, and there's going to be one less person who's going to go out there and harm, say, about 100 more people. And at, at that point of time, those 100 other people who could have possibly been harmed, who had definitely been harmed after that person went out, would have been saved at this point. So that trade-off does exist and is better on us in the house. So the impacts we give to you are, again, twofold, major, majorly. One being that there's going to be 100% rehabilitation. And secondly, that they're going to become an asset to society when they actually go out as strange individuals, where they're able to become better people who have self-actualized, self-realized their own harms, their own detriments, and things that they have done, and actually be able to compensate truly for it, right? That's sort of uh, a, a transparency that's sort of like giving back to the people that they've harmed will truly happen only on our side of the house and not on the governments because over there they really do not care about anybody that except, else except themselves or say something like money or something else that is materialistic in nature so that can probably help them gain something right at that point in time when a comparative who uh, becomes a better person right these particular victims become better people much better people on our side of the house other than on their side for all these reasons we negate All right, I thank the leader of opposition. I invite the deputy prime minister actually here. Second. Yeah, hi. Am I visible and audible? Yep. All good. Also, free, feel free to take POIs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, before I start, hi, I'll be the DLO and I don't have any specific pronouns and um, I'll explicitly ask for a POI in the fifth minute. It's preferably from CG, of course. Okay. Mm. Starting in three, two, one. Panel, when the OG talks us to about as to how torture is ineffective, understand that the kind that the fiat that the O, at least when the CO gets in this debate, is that this torture that we're inflicting onto these cri criminals, it is 100% successful in to be able to rehabilitate these individuals. That when they come and talk about mental toll, understand that when this rehabilitation happens, it means that essentially these same criminals, they become rehabilitated and they essentially do not commit the same crimes again. When we talk about mental toll, understand that that's the price that we talk about that these individuals have to pay. 
have have to pay why oji tells us that they, that we are making an assertion that hey that at all that these people are bad thus we should kill them understand that these people are especially bad because these are the same individuals who have who have been indulged in heinous crimes understand that when you indulge in money laundering it affecting thousands of individuals well or pay to pay check etc wherein these same individuals are affecting the livelihoods and the and the ability of these multiple individuals to succeed and sustain in the in the in, in the economy and the society and considering as to how problematic and as to how cut through the society is where individuals have to constantly live paycheck to paycheck understand that this that these criminals are the ones who disrupt the flows of Of the daily flows of multiple individuals at a point in which these individuals actually become so problematic that this mental toll is a price that they have to pay to be able to understand the amounts of harm and inflict that they had inflicted that had inflicted onto these onto onto their victims. Right? Understand that when OG comes and talks to us about these alternatives, that okay, we are engaging them in a two way. Right? First thing that these these in these programs are first of all not at all successful, and two, even if they were successful, what is the likelihood of these programs to be even to be to be able to inflict some some sort of change to these individuals firstly understand that these rehabilitation programs social programs are far often inaccessible to these individuals because rehabilitation is not really a wide known concept in various countries firstly secondly understand that even if it was a wide wide known concept the what is the, that og has never really proven to us what is the likelihood of these individuals actually being able to open to therapy being open to other kinds of these soft core measures because understand that these are the same criminals who had engaged in the who had engaged in crimes since since i don't know for, for my multiple years by virtue of which like they were consciously aware that they're inflicting either moral or physical or or any other type of harm onto their victims at a point in which therapy actually becomes well ineffective onto these individuals because understand that these are the same individuals who have become desensitized to these kind of things at a point in which understand that when these same individuals are sent to prison they become far more desensitized and and they come out as even more hardened criminals why does that happen saloni has explicitly told you that when these criminals go into prisons they exposed to prison culture when wherein these individuals can well be exposed to multiple types of prison fights prison culture wherein these individuals form their own under under underworld network wherein they still continue to engage in the crime either not in the form of well direct where you can actually point it out right then the direct extension or direct response to the og where the comment doctors about the obligation of a police officer understand that the obligation of the police officer or the detective here is to stop evils in whatever manner necessary understand that these are the same police officers who have their own informants and these informants can still be the criminals understand that at that point in time the of the moral obligation of these police officers to be able to stop the evils so we tell you that the moral obligation of the of the detective here is to be able to stop the evil in whichever manner possible and the manner that we propose to you is far more effective and far more quicker because now our system is fairer right but that fair system point more on that later also understand that again rehabilitation and social programs right that these individuals are very less likely to be able to prone to some sort of change to these kind of rehabilitation programs right at least on, uh, but also even if there was some sort of change in these individuals what is the likelihood or the sustainability of this change to last long within these individuals because understand they do not have a fiat of 100% rehabilitation in their paradigm but at least we do then lastly understand that they come and tell us that laws will never work that's not an assertion we have made we have explicitly told you why social contract theory has failed where state has engaged in multiple crimes wherein wherein we see that police officers engaging in various uh, gender related crimes color related crimes wherein these are the same police officers who have inflicted thousands of harms onto these individuals at a point in which state has failed and by at least we tell that the jigsaw killer provides better catharsis to the society at large and that is what a major stakeholder here is right just to pro to protect the stakeholders that is a society og has never really told you as to how really are the stakeholders as that is a society far more well protected in this scenario because according to them they are able to provide some sort of rehabilitation but that rehabilitation comes at a cost of multiple years of therapy at least in our end there is a quicker one because now either these individuals die or two they come on 100% rehabilitative right now but my back to my point as to why is what is the fairness of this so called vigilante system understand that the system focuses on all types of victims and does not discriminate like the existing system on the basis of race color gender etc where we understand that these are the same police officers who had engaged in multiple times of race related crimes color related crimes and inflicting harms on certain types of people at least this kind of vigilante system does not engage in this kind of discrimination one to understand that this kind of system uh, this kind of vigilante system focuses on the crime degree and the intensity of the thing right at least on a comparative in, in, in ogs and we never understand as to that this crime and degree is not really taken into consideration because the likelihood of a jury to be actually well swayed away is far higher because of as to how a lawyer is actually able to argue thirdly understand what is the intention of the jog jigsaw killer the intention of the jigsaw killer is not to kill these individuals and not to kill these criminals but to provide catharsis to the society at the point in which we tell you that the the, the intention of the jigsaw killer is far more purer and is far more just 
justified because now it is at least, that, that the Zifakil is at least protecting the society at large by, by well, quickly removing the evils in the society at a point in which that even if these individuals do not survive and they become victim to this vigilante system, at least there is one lesser evil in the society. And then lastly, quick justice. Understand that in the OG's paradigm, understand that these are the same individuals who fight, who, that the victims fight for justice for years. And while they fight for justice for years, these are the same criminals who still continue to perpetuate the harm. At least in a paradigm, these individuals will, be, will not even exist in the society to begin with. But before that, CG, POI. Why do you think that white color justice, white color criminals are going to be punished? It's going to be symmetrical under your work, whereas you can also arrest this type of jigsaw killer and bring attention to the white color crimes in our the, our world. Also. Understand that when you actually arrest the jigsaw killer, you are actually allowing these white collar criminals to still exist because these are the same white collar criminals who have far more influence in your status quo. At least in our system, vigilante system, they don't have that influence anymore. What you have to prove to me is that this influence of these white collar criminals were not just the only criminals, but there are also other types of criminals who have suppressed witnesses, either in the form of bribing, killing these individuals, etc. And how is that influence lesser in your paradigm? At least in our paradigm, we are cutting off this influence by actually paying, by, uh, by thinking some sort of harm onto these individuals, but these individuals actually feel the pain that they that they had that they in initially inflicted on their, onto their victims. So at that point in time, the ability to reform the morality of these, of these criminals is far higher on our end, at least in our end, that whatever alternatives are going to tell me you have to prove to me as to how more effective they are in on your end and, and even if they're effective what is the likelihood of the sustainability with that we negate all right i think deputy leader of opposition i invite the member of government here okay. just let me set my timer Okay, so starting in three, two, one. So OG comes out and tell you about how the standards of helping, uh, about standards of helping people, and secondly, about how people, how these like uh, kind of bad people will get out like anyway, right? And then after that, in DPM, they tell you about uh, violation of human dignity, telling you about like um, how after they arrest people and af after how they free these kind of jigsaw killers, how these kinds of uh, torture will not be effective, but what we think is missing from opening government is that they did not really tell you about the incentive structure of detective themselves. So what CG is going to come into this debate is to tell you and to actually characterize about this incentive structure of the detective itself. But first, let us tell you about our burden under this uh, motion for today. Our burden under CG is to tell you that how these, how by arresting these criminals, uh, these jigsaw criminals will be able to uphold the criminal justice system and this criminal justice system as the, the best um, agency in order to uphold these kind of uh, in order to uphold these kind of um, justice. So first of all, we need to understand that these kinds of uh, jigsaw killers have actually caused a lot of harm to the society. You, we see that these kind of uh, uh, these jigsaw killers, you know, trying to kill, uh, trying to uh, create these kinds of uh, blood flowing out from people's hands just to escape from, from the rooms and so on and so forth. So they already cause a lot of harm to these white collar criminals. And other than that, we see that these detectives, they used a lot of time to actually go and track these jigsaw criminals themselves because these jigsaw, these jigsaw criminals do not just magically appear from out of the net. They use a lot of time, they research and therefore be able to to, to get to track these jigsaw criminals and in the end get to, you know, going to arrest them. So with this, we think that under, with the, the time and also the research that have been used by detectives, we think that the detectives has to have the duty to protect people and it will be more beneficial for the detective themselves to have this incentive to arrest the criminal, uh, these jigsaw criminals. But before, uh, before that, right? So let us tell you the extension of our, our side uh, from the opening government. So what is actually, uh, actually differentiates us from the opening government is that we'll tell you why the detective has the duty to protect the people and to tell you more about the importance of them protecting people because under OG, they just told you about 
the, uh, the process and the reasons, but they did not really tell you as to why is it so important for them to, to, to protect the people, as well as the benefits that these detectives can actually claim from protecting the people. So uh, first off, to just tell you why these detectives have the, protect, have the duty to protect people is because firstly, they have the authority to, to actually arrest these kinds of criminals in the criminal justice system. And therefore, if they do not follow these kinds of their responsibility, what will happen is that they will receive backlash from the police force. Because if they do not follow their responsibility, they are incompetent. They do not arrest the people when they are when it is their job to do so. And therefore, they will be seen as someone who is incompetent. They will be seen as someone who does not do their jobs. And in the, at the end of the day, they will, they will maybe you know, not be able to, to do their jobs well and therefore not be a, a, a detective anymore. So when this happens, we see that they using a lot of time and research to track these, kind of, uh, these kinds of uh, jigsaw criminals. And at the end of the day, just let them go. We see that other kinds of you no know, jigsaw killers will come, they will appear and people will just take justice into their own hands. So it will actually worsen these kinds of problems instead of helping these kinds of, uh, these people turn off the new leaf and having uh, reducing the number of jigsaw killers in the society right now. And what else can these kind of detectives claim? Why is it so beneficial for them? Three reasons, right? First is because when these detectives arrest them, they have the, the authority and responsibility to do so. Therefore, they will not have any kind of guiltiness of these kinds uh, of, of not arresting the criminal criminal, the criminal, uh, the criminals, the jigsaw criminals. Second of all, is that when these detectives, they actually arrest these kinds of jigsaw criminals, what they will have is that they will have a significant amount of fame in the society because they have arrested someone who is very notorious for the crimes. And therefore, how this is important is that it may help them to gain more economic prosperity in the future. And third of all, is that it can help to improve the deterrence in society, which we see is, some, is a long-term impact to society rather than the things that um, OO has come out to tell you about you know, them having uh, uh, these kinds of jigsaw killers going to rehabilitate or rehabilitate these white collar criminals. Because at the end of the day, when these jigsaw criminals are, do not exist in society, the white collar crimes will still happen. The white collar criminals will still be existing in society. Therefore, we believe that on the our side of the house, our detectives arresting them, having the state, having the criminal justice system actually doing their jobs, it will create the, this kind of long-term deterrence and therefore it will help people uh, to stop these kind of white, white collar crimes. And other than that, when OO tells you, try to tell you, tell, tell you about how their side will be able to help with the white collar crimes by letting jigsaw killers trying to rehabilitate them, we believe that there are other alternatives that are far, far better than their far better than they are, they are having their jigsaw killers trying to you know, rehabilitate them because we think that the state actually has also has the accountability and not giving these kinds of uh, jigsaw criminals uh, taking justice into their own hands. Therefore, we believe that by arresting these jigsaw criminals, it can actually bring attention to these white collar crimes and let these states have the incentive to counter these kind of white collar crimes. We can also use other alternatives, for example, like protests, for example, like using awareness posts on social media, which we, we think it's far better than having these jigsaw criminals trying to do it in secret, you know, uh, uh, doing these kind of very, very murderous or very cruel kind of things to these kinds of white collar criminals. We believe under our side, we have proved to you much better than opening government under the incentive structure for the detective and told you that how it's far much better to counter these kind of white collar crimes so therefore, we believe that uh, we, are, we also stand far better than the OO. So very proud to propose. All right, and I thank the member of government. I invite the member of opposition. Here's one. Hello, can I confirm that I'm audible and visible? Okay, great, one second. Yeah, all good. Great, give me just a second.
Great. Um, POIs verbally. I repeat, uh, I'll take POIs verbally. I'll take a POI from OG at about five, five and a half minutes. Um, do not harangue, although you've never so far, so it should be fine. Okay. <sighs> Starting my speech in three, two, one. The problem with the OO is that OO give a lot of claims, just never, they just never mechanize it. We're going to be the team that actually mechanizes a lot of those claims, and hence we're going to be accessing all of the impacts better than them. The problem with OG and CG is that they never actually took a POI from us, and this is problematic because what we're going to proving is twofold. One, why the justice system is far more non-consensual, far more arbitrary, and far more corrupt than the alternative, and secondly, why necessarily this should be something that weighs over any theoretical principal obligation that you may have. Let's go quickly into our into our claims. Um, everything else is, you know, internally refuted. Firstly, ju the justice system is far more morally arbitrary because you do not have many, any consent into the state. One, a lot of the rules of justice system are made by old, rich, wild people hundreds of years ago, whatever, like which nation you are, which you made dozens of years ago. You had no ability to consent to that. You had no ability to choose what those rules are. Those rules often still stay in place and stay on books. It's very difficult to refute them because it takes many, many years and far more, it requires like significant majorities within parliament in order to overturn some of these rules. Secondly, you often in many of these nations live in dictatorships. You often do not have the capacity to vote. In fact, the majority of countries are at best not, are not democracies, but at least quasi dictatorships. Thirdly, you often are, voting is incredibly imperfect within these areas, right? A, you, have, you, you often are likely to be disproportionately poor, which is you have the inability to actually access any of these abilities to go and vote and that sort of stuff. And B, even if you are like, even if you're like not extremely poor, often they do not set up ballots within your areas. They run through the mandarin in your specific areas. All of those things are far more important. Four, poly, uh, the politicians often de deliberately coerce you. They run propaganda campaigns. They often run those campaigns based on areas where you happen to be living. You do not get much consent over where you live. Hence, you do not often have consent over what moral values you choose to hold because of the time you're growing up. All of this means a couple of things. State laws are arbitrary. Your system is no is non-existent. You do not have a social contract. This is a certain harm on many of these things. The second thing we're going to, second sub to make over here, what we're going to take OG at their best compared to O. We're going to assume these people get caught on either side of the house and these people are going to get put into jail. The claim we make is very simple. Jail is far worse and far, far more unjust than what the jigsaw puzzle does. One, you often have far greater forms of abuse, including sexual abuse, trigger warning, I'm sorry, um, forms of sexual abuse, forms of different kinds of killings and murders that happen within these things. Hence, death is at the very least, not maybe symmetric, but at least is far, far less important a factor in making this determination. B, you often are far more likely to have gangs within these areas, right? Places where they deliberately recruit people within your specific ones, and then in, in return, they often promise you things like protection. They often promise you things like resources or better food because the jail often that you're living in is pretty shit, which means you're often likely to join those gangs. Thirdly, your employment opportunities post those things are far, far worse because often because you have the stigma of being a prisoner, you often means that once you go out of it, you have more, no capacity to access employment. Fourth, you often mean, you often die in a lot of ways. There are often are a lot of different riots and things that break out. Often the police officers and guards are incredibly problematic towards you. You. Often the justice system you're working in has no system of accountability. Outside of most Western nations, you do not have any transparency in these systems. Guards get maximum say about what these things specifically look like. Finally, you often have to run the risk of getting brutal and getting killed as a result of this. All this means a couple of things. One, you are facing a sentence that is disproportionate to the crime that you have committed because jail is far, far worse in all of these variety of instances. Why is the comparative far, far more justified? It's very simple. It's because you can get off because of a far more direct and proximate choice you make i.e. on the comparative, on the justice system, if you are someone who rehabilitates, if you are someone who's you know feeling and changed your opinion, you are someone who does good, it still doesn't matter because all of these harms are external to what your crime specifically is, A, and B, even if you were really good, at best you may get like a year off or something on really good behavior. Most often you do not. You still serve the same sentence even if you have rehabilitated. On our side of the house, because the motion gives us fiat, you specifically, if you make the direct active choice, get the chance to get let loss and get the chance to live a new life, i.e. on our side of the house, we access far better prisoners' rights, we access far better rights because this individual gets to choose to get off. The final thing to prove here is that rich people actually get are able to get off in many of these instances right like oh never actually like prove this here's the reason why one there are often subconscious bias within the justice system within juries to actually prioritize people who are seen as well off people who are seen as you know having more civilized or moral values people who are wearing better clothes that sort of stuff right which means rich people are formulated to get less sentences compared to poor minorities right especially if they're if they're racial minorities secondly they often able to hire far greater firms of far greater like teams of lawyers far better lawyers far better capacity to in to ensure plea bargains which means they can either a find loot within the system that means they don't get they get off or be the lawyers are often good enough to take away you know like the really like often incompetent da's that may exist or like the really incompetent other systems that may necessarily exist all this proves this argument proves a couple of things one it proves that the harm is certain it is not like proximate 
Two, it proves that there's no individual, like you do not meaningfully consent in the state into the vast majority of circumstances, right? If you are disproportionately poor, which you are likely to be statistically, you have no capacity to vote for it. Your rules are ones you do not have capacity to change into it. And because you were born into a state you do not consent into, it is the state is equally morally arbitrary. How does this way versus principal obligation? A number of things to note in terms of who you are as a detective, which none seems to have found out. One, it is not clear you were actually a police officer, right? You can very easily be a private detective. The motion does not explicitly say so, which means you do not have this direct obligation towards the state in the way that which they specifically do so. The second thing to say is what we proved to you is that state actually fails an obligation to you as an individual. One, they promise that they would often not indulge in torture. Most of these systems often do so because guards do not get any like accountability systems. A, B, a lot of these like regimes are dictatorial in nature, which means they often have incentives to ensure the prison guards are able to beat you up or murder you or do any sort of thing whenever they want to, right? So you often do, they often fail your thing towards you. Secondly, they fail their contract towards you because they have ensured that there is no capacity to consent within the rules of the state. The ability to actually consent in terms of the actual ideology that you're facing is incredibly minimal. It is really, really small. You do not have the capacity to meaningfully vote for them. You don't have the capacity to meaningfully change those laws. Thirdly, the jail, they, their aim is to prove that jail is much, much better. I think I've just proved to you that jail is not better. Hence, you do not have an obligation as a police officer to the state because the state has failed its obligation towards you. I'm going to take a POF from OG. CG? Okay, all right, that's it. Finally, let's weigh this obligation at its very best, right? Why do you as an individual have a greater obligation towards this specific jigsaw killer on the comparator? One, because it is not clear that the you as a detective should be prioritizing your obligation as a dict as like a you know whatever a, a detective over your obligation as say what might be a general human in society that sort of stuff right what this means is very simple it means that you may have other values outside of this at the point where in the debate we've already shown you a number of ways as how you get far better like access and more morality and outside of the house this dog this one should be prioritizing it over their obligation towards a detective but secondly they've never actually weighed this obligation towards a detective to begin with right like i think the fact is we just help far more people in outside of the house and we have far more people in a principal value because we give them better access to freedom and that sort of stuff that is uniquely valuable but the final thing we're going to do is all right I'm going to presume, let's say at the very best, what we have to justify is vigilantism. I don't think it's true because this is just one specific individual. This specific individual is not one that is known by the specific community. And this specific individual ensures that you are not going to get caught if you let them off, which is why CG is also out of this debate, I must add. All right. But crucially, let's take them at the very best. Vigilantism, we say, is often valid because you do not have capacity to consent into the state and because you do not have the capacity to consent into the rules and laws of that state. But you must still be following them and you still feel the, face the power of them. Crucially, this also means the state gets maximal power and asymmetry over you. Which means when the state fails in its obligation towards these rich white collar criminals, people who've committed crimes that are often grievous and often are putting far, far many more groups of people into poverty, we say that the alternative is better. That you as an individual have a right to exit that specific state like rules because you do not consent to it and hence be able to put it forth your own morality. I cannot count the number of ways CO are winning this debate. Happy to oppose. All right, I thank the member of opposition and invite the government whip to here. I have like 20 seconds if it's okay with that. Yep, sure. Yep, okay. Okay. I'll take the PI from the text channel, but if I don't hear it, after the fifth minute, you could give the PI and from the voice channel. So without any further ado, I'll just start. Let me start. Three, two, one, go. The opposition bench are trying to claim to the fact that look, that amount of the justice system that you're talking about is significantly horrible and they are at their arbitrary nature part. Hence, we generally do not trust about that. Is a very unfair claim to make at the first place, and we generally do not think that is a pragmatic claim to at the first place in individual. Just look, the justice system that we're talking about have a lot of accountability mechanisms that exist. For example, journalists that constantly see their news, news TV channels that constantly over observe their motive and issue. And there's also social media that you could post about how the justice system is operating and how Hence, the amount of eyes and other metrics that we have shown you, those ensure the justice system has some principal duty or some incentive structure to, in order to ensure to provide them better justice, a retributive justice of the first part. Hence, all the harm that I got or you know, opposition bench trying to prove doesn't seem it's not symmetrical and does not it's highly unlikely to happen in the first place because of the accountability mechanism at the first place which we explained to you even in that we case we generally believe we can easily win this debate because we generally do not believe that this jigsaw person is someone we should care about because it's a criminal they were talking about 
Hence, what is the major two question that comes in this debate? Two things. First, in why is the principle justified? Second, why is it better for the CGS system that we're talking about? Why? In context, the principle in case what they have come to. They give you two claims. Firstly, the old claim you do very factor, look, there's going to be a retributive justice system that occurred. Secondly, you can create some sort of deterrence factor part. What is the retributive justice system they come and tell you the factor? They tell you the factor, look, look, this retributive justice system that we're talking about, we're going to ensure these white criminals are going to be justice, white criminals are going to be punished for their crimes, and it's going to be in a proportional manner, which is clay father mechanized by the C, C or by what we tell you the very fact that the first book part we generally do not believe that look they, these other jigs of criminals have a lot of other alternative part. he could post in the social media he could talk about in the tv channel he could talk about those he could talk to in a riot the protest to this issue part we believe that there is present a lot of alternative rather than the resorting to violence or creating this violent tribes at the first place part we generally do not believe that why that significant violence is going to be significant better alternative compared to protest before because you're still creating a lot of a lot of attention we're still creating a lot of people are going to know about it and people are going to protest and people are going to talk about it and that is the way that you could you could tackle the white color crimes in the first place and could ensure this these white color crimes people do apologies for the mistake and kind of create your better part as we generally do not understand the violence mechanism in the first place and why the violent me mechanism is significantly better in context of part second even if we do admit the fact that okay they have some authority of their violence to go for resorting violence we still tell you significant harmful contents of legitimacy it's a part because we don't think it's a legitimate action which to harm other people. Because these certain individuals has no authority of mind, has no extra rules and regulation in order to hold the justice of the first place. Because that's not. It is for the police officer to do it on fire, the moment of fire. Thirdly, in context of the very fact that oh, comes and tells you, look, they give you fast justice. They give you much more better justice. We generally do not understand how is it going to be fast justice at the first place. Because the amount of trash, the amount of emotional trials that you do, you need a lot of resources. You need a lot of planning. You need a lot of uh, uh, thinking capability in order to ensure because that means we generally do not understand how is it a fast way, fast way to give justice at the first place. Second, even if we do consider it's a fast way to give justice, why is it relevant in this context of debate? Because this fast amount of justice is only limited to one, two criminals of five. Because look, this is a cancer patient that we're talking about. Hence, the, the, the ability for him to control justice and our ability for him to practice justice is simply limited to only one or two criminals of five. It is not limited to majority of the criminals and the five. Thirdly, in context of the fact of the long-term benefit that you create, it's significantly limited in the context of five. So even if you good, even if this justice system better and if it creates significant or pragmatic or benefit of issue, we generally do not believe that people are it's going to create a long-term benefit part. Because rather it's going to harm the amount of opportunity cost that you have. It's going to destroy the principle of value of the police officers. It's going to destroy the principle of values of these significant about significant about issues about this or this private investigator or predatory. So the CEO comes and tell you, look, this is we're only talking about private detective part. That is not a very exclusive claim itself and that is not highly unlikely because it's going to be down to dictators are going to do and do a lot of things of going to talk about. And on that point, that on the principle of duty, we generally believe that it's not better to do it in the first place. It's not important to do it apart because you have other alternative to do it. The second thing, why the detective should be have the incentive structure part or why the CJ system is going to harm on the problem in the long run. We tell you the very fact that the moment that you enable you let go this just criminal to go, what increases you? Three things are going to create you for Firstly, the people are going to see this criminal justice system as incompetent. They will, they will not have that trust issue. Hence, you're not making the justice system better in the both sides of the house and the fire and we generally fire. But the moment that you catch this leader, you catch this jigsaw killer, you create a significant better face value for this criminal justice court system. You create a significant face value for the dictator itself. You create more people to trust these criminals. You look, the justice system has some sort of capability, has some sort of ability to go uphold justice for part. But rather than the contrary, you do not enable those type of benefit to have. Hence, that benefit that we portray is very exclusive, much more better, or much more better in context, because A, you show the court system can be much more better and fine, and we could be. We've already proved the court has a system, has a principal incentive to in order to improve the mechanization, you have an incentive to handle order to better. And there's also been an accountability mechanism for the, from the journalists, from the people from social media, from the people from that know that newspaper channels. Hence, those incentive structure enable them to go off on an issue. Hence, you will better. Hey, before I move up, you are from the O. You tell that these individuals, apart from telling how bad our case is, just prove to me as to how is your case more sustainable and more effective. 
Yeah, I'm going to prove it under my part comparative. First, as the issue with the B2G, the part this is detectives not treating a significant better life value on the issue and they're not treating enabling the speed and not enabling the amount of significant better. And the court system is a horrible and the court system is going to face a loss of a lot of criticism apart. What will this will do? It will not create a significant or deterrence factor for the long term. Secondly, the amount of justice systems are going to be much more done by this vigilante part. Because right now, the people are going to glorify these jigsaw killers or going to which will further much create much of chaotic criminals and much more will give a rise to other jigsaw killers to at the first place in the long run, which is for the much more worse for the society of Papai and the amount of justice system you get in the retributive justice is going to be horrible. Part. Even if we do believe the jigsaw killers are better, but the other alternatives like the other criminals are not going to be significantly better. So what is this comparative that we prove it to you? They tell you the way better look, we at least ensure some sort of like because prison systems are much more horrible and prison system part. We tell you the way better look, prison system has a lot of accountability mechanism and a lot of have the scan away. Because look, this is not just a one dimensional factor that the prison system is going to be horrible. I will not cater to you. It will help you. It will create you some sort of emotional relief and factor. But whether in the contrary, on the justice, even if you are retaliated, even if you do understand you're wrong, but it creates your social trauma. It creates a significant harm and emotional trauma, which will not let you to do work better and much more. Hence, the more, even if you're a good person, the benefit that you get is only limited in one place of power. Whereas in the contrary, where the prison system is not only that you're creating, helping the justice court system, but you're also in a even even willing to help these people to go for much more understand their choices in a much more constructive manner. So in the worst case, you know, even if we do admit the factor that look, we generally understand the factor that look that the amount of the opportunity courts might not get justice or other. We tell you the fact that you create a long-term benefit and you make these people much more less vulnerable in our set of us, as we are proud to oppose. Okay, it seems the chair has dropped out of the call. Just give them a minute or so to come back. Okay, hold on. Okay. Um, for a few hours, by the way, I have to take them through chat because um I cannot hear you. Um, yeah. By the way, before I move on, shout out to Leona, my partner throughout the entire month. Um, also shout out to my kids that will probably be watching this. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's pretty cool. Right. Hope you're all having a good day. By the way, you guys have the. It's your first. You you guys are the first people to see my hair. Yes, I just dyed it. Anyway, okay. Sorry. Mm. Sorry to my speech. In three, two, one. The way in which this motion is worded is for us to be able to look at the different obligations of this detective and its strategic observation is that both teams need to be able to weigh off these principles, which exclusively came coming from closing opposition. Therefore, you should negate and you should vote for CEO. For C, let's then go on to OG, the team that isn't able to prove how exactly they're able to rehabilitate more people, but secondly, also not prove why exactly the obligation that they propose of this detective is the most important. For C, let's go on to their first claim, talking about how they're going to be able to rehabilitate more people. On the technical side, why is this an argument that they cannot necessarily win, most especially given that rehabilitation and its process is one of the most important issues talked about in this debate? One, the only analysis holding their case is that rehabilitation works in certain instances that these criminals might end up on the more effective side of rehabilitation, therefore we have to do it. Look, there's already uncertainty as to proving why this rehabilitation works, but also I think that they reasonably, like we can reasonably claim 
an opposition that the fiat is at this rehabilitation is 100%. They had to weigh off why that small percentage of people that like where rehabilitation works is something that they're willing to trade off. But what they needed to do also to win this clash on rehabilitation is to prove why one, rehabilitation is better exactly on their side, like most especially on the metric of scale and just how many people get rehabilitated because at least we're able to win on that side. But secondly, at the very least, they also had to walk us through how the rehabilitation process works because this isn't a fiat that's inherent to their side. But even if we are to respond to this major claim, I think the reason, like my partner, Pranav, already proves why exactly the rehabilitation is far worse on government side. When we told you about the jail being the comparative, and notice how this is a, an explicit contribution coming from closing opposition, where we told you that the reason why jail just and rehabilitation doesn't work, even if opening government doesn't prove the mechanism to this, one, we've already proven to you how people often come out much worse, like most especially like these people who commit white collared crimes don't necessarily learn from their mistakes because there's far worse torture in jail. But secondly, like if you look at jail, you literally just get your free time. There is no way of reflection other than the time that's given to you to just stay in a cell. But thirdly, we even told you that if you talk about white collared criminals, there's most likely like they don't even have to go through jail, meaning that they can get out of uh, can get out of it anyway. There are multiple options for them, most especially when they are rich and when there's a subconscious bias to them being rich, which is something that also came exclusively from my partner. Secondly, let's talk about the other claim coming from OG. And I think that this is the stronger claim that we have to deal with. So they claim that this is morally unjust and they try to parallelize it to torture. The first thing that we're going to respond is by saying that we're talking about the individual person and whether or not they agree that torture is justified. The reason about like why torture is something that's unjust already just exists within the international community. It's something that's agreed upon by the international community. But like the international community doesn't necessarily represent every single person. So why, what did my partner say about this? I think we have to genuinely question why exactly like just saying that, well, torture is morally unjust, therefore this like this action in and of itself is morally unjust. We, they had to prove why this is the most important value for the individual. As I've already said, it doesn't necessarily follow that they also agree that torture is something that's unjustified. Because to you as an individual, you can say that torture is something that is justified if it means that it you like you agree that they deserve that kind of torture. But also also, my partner already proved why your obligation doesn't necessarily always lie within the state, most even if you are a detective. They also proved why this is something that you never consent to do and how people often don't agree with the states, like the state. And there are multiple structural reasons that my partner proved, which is something that GovWeb had the opportunity to respond to, but did not anyway. But secondly, like the, the second thing my partner also proved is why do you have an obligation? Why then do you have an obligation to your own morality? and why this is the obligation that weighs far greater than your obligation as like a police detective that's supposed to follow the state laws. Notice how like a lot of white collared like crimes is probably something that you experience like close to you, right? Your family members are probably victims of those kinds of money laundering, of corruption, of people who aren't able, like who are, are being technically stolen from. So they also have, but also if you are a like an individual person outside of being a detective, you have to talk about how harmful the problem is. So you want to talk about the justice for the thousands of people affected, which have never been like probably achieved in the past because of how hard it is to acquit these people versus like the people that only care about these white collared victims, which are probably the family that cares for these criminals, which are quite the only few people that do care for them. But also, even if we were already able to refute like why exactly the obligation lies more towards your morality than that of the states, we still engage by saying that torture is something that is symmetric by proving to you that jail is much more abusive. So, but at least they have an option on our side, meaning that it doesn't always result to death. You can simply like follow with whatever the rules are in order for you to be able to survive. But we also say that corruption is not less worse on their side, given that the state is also unequal and arbitrary and that the, even the corrupt police system ends up killing a lot of these people. But before I move on, I'll, sure, I'll take a point. From OG. Uh, from who? Yeah, OG. Okay. Um, so why is the, why is it far less consensual when you can move states versus in that moment when Jigsaw gets you, you have no choice but to for example, cut off your own leg. Um, how is this somehow, and as like an agent of the state, why Honestly, are you standing sorry. for? Okay, the honestly, state? it's not like these people cannot easily like just consent to being like, 
it's not consensual in a way that you still technically will end up in the same situation. So I don't think so that their consent is something that would matter in any case. But also, let's just deal then with the case coming from CG, right? They try to already, and the reason why CG is already out of this debate, so when they try to talk about protecting people, they told us about how your obligation as a detective is you're probably going to receive backlash from the police force. First of all, how will people know that they didn't follow their responsibilities? I think that the info slide already assumes that nobody will know that they did catch the killer, but also it's normal for you to not be able to catch serial killers given the nature of your job. The harm in and of itself that CG argues is already out of this debate, like the harms that they prove of you losing your job as a detective or losing your moral standing in society is already out. But we even already still proven why the responsibility lies in their morality, which is in and of itself able to weigh against this. But when they also try to say that, well, you can, the jigsaw killer can probably do this in multiple reasons. They didn't even prove the, or like the uh, effectiveness of approaching journalists, given that when you talk about attacking white color like criminals they're already like these people are likely going to be like uh, like these people are likely going to be victimized because they just come from minority groups or because they are like smaller individuals taking claims versus powerful individuals two reasons then why closing opposition wins one we were able one we were the most strategic team and so far as we were able to prove to you why the obligation of the detective is the most important like to their own morality which is something that is a prerequisite for uh, like for opening opposition when they want to prove exactly why this is something like we, why we ought to care for the numerous people that will be safe. For all these reasons and more, proud to oppose things. All right, thank you very much, the opposition whip and everyone for the debate. So, yes, it concludes here. We will be back soon. But, yes, thank you and hope to see you soon.